All right. Hello and welcome. Um, I have now tried uh, three times uh, to record this video. I'm having some technical difficulties, which is really unfortunate for a teacher who instructs uh, students in a technical course. So um, I believe my laptop is having some issues. Um, I apologize for the graininess of the video. I don't have a very high quality webcam here at my home office. Um, I have a better one that I will probably be recording uh, most of these videos on in my uh, office at the high school. But uh, I just wanted to quickly, before uh, I let too much time get away from me, uh, discuss uh, numbering systems, including uh, binary. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and try and keep this video uh, under 15 minutes, hopefully not too much more than about 10 minutes long. So uh, I'd like to first start out by discussing the numbering system that um, everybody should be familiar with. Um, it is known as the decimal numbering system. And you may be familiar with this if you've been through kindergarten. Um, it starts with one, two, three, so on and so forth, okay? So the decimal numbering system, um, I mean, I guess every, every numbering system starts with one, two, three, and goes on and on and on and so on like that. But uh, the decimal numbering system is uh, known as a base 10 numbering system. Base 10 uh, is, it's the actual number of digits that have value for each uh, place in this numbering system. So those digits are 0 through 9. Decimal, base 10, 0 through 9. Okay. So really what you're looking at when you're looking at base 10 is each place is going to be, because it's base 10, it's going to be 10 to an exponential value. Uh, so in the first place is 10 to the value of 0. So we'll write that down, 10 to the value of 0. And anything, uh, those that have had a basic math class in the last, I guess, 10 to 20 years would be familiar um, with sort of how this works. Anything to the power of 0. I guess, I don't know, uh, even if you've had a math class even further back than that, I, I don't think that concept has changed, but I don't think they were teaching that to students. Um, uh, earlier than like the 90s so um, but 10 to the power of 0 of course is going to be 1 so in the first place we have the ones place you may be familiar with that sort of terminology so then we have 10 to the power of 1 that would be the next place and that is the tens place of course anything to the power of 1 is going to be itself next we have 10 to the power of 2 and 10 to the power of 3 and so on and so forth it goes on until you hit infinity, which you never hit. So it keeps going and going and going, of course. But we're just going to stop at 10 to the power of 3, just for the sake of demonstration. Now, I know you guys are all uh, hopefully very familiar with decimal, and this should be sort of a concept that is um, not going over your head. But 10 to the power of 0, of course, 1's place, 10's place, 100's place, 1,000's place, and so on. So when we see a decimal number written out as... Um, in, in its normal form format, it's easy for us to translate. So, for instance, if we saw the number 1,972, it's relatively simple for us to translate. Really, though, what you're doing is actually in your head, whether you realize it or not, is you are taking 1 and multiplying that times 10 to the 3. 9 multiplying that times 10 to the 2, 7 multiplying that times 10 to the 1, and 2 and multiplying that times 10 to the 0 in order to figure out what value this number has. So um, when uh, you write it all out, this is what you get. You get 1 times 10 to the 3 equals 1,000. You do 9 times 10 to the 2 equals 900. Uh, 7 times 10 to the 1 equals 70, and 2 times 10 to the 0 equals 2. And when you do the math on that, you get 1,700 and, or, or, or 1,972, if I can 
do math, there we go. So you see at the bottom here, we're just simply taking the one and applying that to the place which it belongs. So uh, the reason why I do that out is for the conceptualization so that when we go into different numbering systems, what we're doing is just taking the base value, so base 10, so we have 10 digits, that's the base value, right? And applying that to the places. Okay, so let's now move on uh, from decimal. We're going to jump into binary. Okay, binary is base 2, meaning there are two available digits for valuing each place. Okay, binary. And those digits, of course, are 0 and 1. And we know that each each uh, binary digit is known as a bit um, from our discussion in uh, the lecture. But I'm going to go ahead and write this out. Normally, I would start on the uh, the right hand side and move to the left because that's how you that's how you write numbers. It's always uh, when you're when you're writing it out. Uh, I suppose you write from left to right. But really, um, you you would start with the lowest place first and move over as the number grows okay so we start with one and then we go eventually up to nine and then we roll over the the ones place to a zero and the tens place up to a one and then that would go up continually until we hit two and three in the, in the tens place and so on until we hit nine in the tens place and nine in the ones place and then go up to one zero zero okay so that's what we're doing with binary as well but let me go ahead and write out the places um, i mentioned in the lecture on tuesday night uh, or last night, I suppose, um, that the, the smallest amount of binary digits that you can have is known as a, uh, before, before you no longer have data, is known as a byte. You have to have eight uh, places, essentially, eight digits before, uh, or, or if you have any less than that, you know, you cease to have uh, viable data. In most applications, there are some applications where uh, you can have smaller amounts um, uh, we're, we're not going to go into that just in just in any detail just yet, but I just want to start by doing eight decimal places. So I'm going to start with two to the power of seven and move my, work my way uh, right. So starting on the left hand side and work my way right. So two to the power of six, two to the power of five, two to the power of four, two to the power of three, two to the power of two. 2 to the power of 1, and 2 to the power of 0. So, of course, that is 8 total places. So, we're starting. Now, when we do the math, it's it's pretty, pretty similar to what we do over here in decimal. We start with 1, of course. You know, we start with 1 over here, 2 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1. And we simply double each time, where... Uh, decimal is, is very easy because you just multiply the previous place times 10. So you just add a zero each time. Now in this case, rather than add a zero each place you move over, you are going to instead add or, or double the previous number. So add the number to itself. So the next place is 2 to the power of 1. Next place is the 2's place, if you want to think about it like that. And the 4, 8, 16... 32, 64, and 128. That's going to be crucial that you remember those numbers or can easily draw on, draw from your memory in, and get those numbers. So hopefully I can invert this because what I'm seeing is actually backwards right now, but uh, I'll hopefully try and invert this video so it's actually valuable and not completely useless. Um, so if you're given a binary number, um, it's actually... Uh, it, because our brains are so geared toward decimal, it makes sense to convert from binary to decimal rather than trying to um, get really good at counting in decimal. You're going to end up confusing yourself. So generally what I recommend is that you learn how to convert from binary to decimal uh, relatively easily. And the way you do that is you look at the place that the digit is in, the binary digit is, and you simply add that to your total in order to get the decimal conversion. Okay, so if we have 
Um, let's say we have a 1 in the 128th place, a 0 in the 64th place, a 0 in the 32, a 0 in the 16, a 1 in the 8th, a 1 in the 4, a 0 in the 2, and a 1 in the 1's place, something that looks sort of like this. All we have to do is sort of the same thing we did over here, where we simply take the place, right, and we multiply that times uh, the value of the place in which it is. So if we had a zero in any one of these places, it would get multiplied by zero, right? And we would just essentially skip that place. So those same things happen over here. So we got to calculate this out. So 128, so you simply do your math here. So one times two to the power of seven, we aren't going to include, we will not include to the power of 6, to the power of 5, to the power of 4, but we will include to the power of 3. So 1 times 2 to the power of 3. Really, you could write each one of those out and say 0 times 2 to the power of whatever. Um, excuse me. It's a phone call. Uh, so then we go 1 times, we have a 1 in the 2 to the power of 2 place, to the power of 2. And we do not have 1 in 2 to the power 1 place, but we do have a 1 in the 2 to the power of 0. So if we do the math, 1 times 128 equals 128. 1 times 8 equals 8. 1 times 4 equals 4. And 1 times 2 equals 2. So now, oh, I'm sorry, I did that incorrectly. 2 to the power of 0. So 1 times 1. Okay. So now, we simply have to do the math. 128 plus 8 is 136. 136 and 4 is 140. 140 and 1 is 141. So the decimal conversion for this binary number is 141. Okay. Hopefully that's clear to everyone so far. So finally, those that's that's two numbering systems, and that should and, and there's just a couple of examples. So it's really quite basic. Counting in binary is just going to uh, increase. So uh, when you're counting in decimal. You, you hit 9, and you go up to 1, 0. When you're counting in binary, you hit 1, and you go up to 1, 0. Okay, so the places uh, are simply going to increase when you hit the last uh, uh, viable character for counting value in a place. Okay, so each time you increase the value, it's going to first increase over here, and then that's going to move over to here, and this is going to go back to 0. It... It's actually relatively simple once you get your head around the concept of it's only two uh, two digits that represent value. Okay, so the last numbering system, and I need to grab another piece of paper for this. The last numbering system that I'm going to discuss is called hexadecimal. Okay. Hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is a base 16. Hexa meaning 6, decimal meaning 10. 6 and 10 is 16. It's a base 16 numbering system. The characters are 0 through F. So once you hit 9, you roll up to A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? So essentially you have actually 15 values for each place, okay? So because it's base, it's actually 16 total because you've got to count 0 as well for each place. But uh, 16, it would work in the same exact way. We're going to start with 16 the power of 0, 
and then go to 16 to the power of 1, and then 16 to the power of 2, 16 to the power of 3, and 16 to the power of 4. Uh, I'm just going to stop at 16 to the power of 3 because that gets too... You start getting into numbers that are pretty hard to calculate just off the top of your head. But uh, you're going to start to see some similarities between hexadecimal and binary here. And really there's similarities that, that translate completely across the board with all of these numbering systems. But um, 16 to the power of 0, of course, is going to be 1. You always start with the ones place no matter what counting system you're starting with or what count of counting system you're working with. It will always start with the ones place. Okay, so it's that character's value, the character that stands in that place, to uh, times the value of the place in which it is. And then we have the 16's place, and then 16, and 16 is 256. Uh, 256 times 16, let me do some quick math here. I'm not, I'm <laughs> not as familiar with the uh, doubling of, or multiplying times 16 just off the top of my head, so... Uh, 6 and um, 4092. My math is slightly off here, but 4092. Okay, 4,000, is it 4,092? Oh, jeez, I better, <laughs> I better just on the calculator really quickly here. I don't want to mislead anybody. So, when it comes to hexadecimal, that's where I say using a calculator is acceptable. Uh, 4,096, oh, 96, not 92. Okay, my math was slightly wrong. I'm glad I pulled out a calculator. Long multiplication, long division, never wear my strong suits. Okay, so here's what we have. We have the ones place, 16's place, 256's place, 4096's place. Okay, so in each place you can go from zero clear up through F. A, uh, so you get to nine and then A has a value equal to 10. So if you have uh, a in the ones place and zeros in every other place, that would equal 10. B would equal 11. C would equal 12. D would equal 13. E would equal 14. And F would equal 15. And then it would roll over, back over to 1, 0. So I know this confuses a lot of people, but we're going to just do this. Write this out. 0 through F. 0 through F. And I know this becomes tough um, for people because you're dealing with letters and numbers and it's like, whoa, this is blowing my mind. Uh, it's actually a lot easier to convert from hexadecimal to binary, but I do want to show you decimal conversion. So I'm just going to come up really quickly with a four-digit long, which is actually a pretty long, uh, uh, hexadecimal number. So let's just say we have D61F. Okay. D61F. This is a potential number that you would see in hexadecimal. So let's quickly go ahead and do the logical conversion here. So we're going to go D has a value in decimal of A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13. So we're going to go 4096 times 13 equals, and then we have 256, in the 256 place we have a 6, so 256 times 6. Uh, in the 16's place we have a 1, so 16 times 1, and then in the 1's place we have an F, F has a value of 15. Okay, so 15 times, or I'm sorry, uh, 1 times 15, 1 times 15 equals. So this, when translated out, when we're converting to decimal, is going to translate down to this right here. Okay? So converting to decimal from hexadecimal is a little bit more of a daunting task than converting to binary. I'll show you a quick trick for doing 
a binary conversion that, that will save a lot of time for you. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and write this out. So I'm actually going to do the math on my calculator because otherwise I will be just horribly off. So 4,096 times 13 is 53,248. 256 times 6 is 1,536. And of course, 16 times 1 is 16, and 1 times 15 is 15. Okay? That's there, that step complete. So now we just have to simply uh, do the math, add these up, just like we do with every other counting system. So 53,000, uh, 53,248 plus 1,536 plus. 16 plus 15 equals 54,815. Okay? So we're doing the same thing. We're just adding additional values. Same thing as decimal, same thing as binary. All these counting systems are going to function in the same way. Okay, we're just adding or removing characters. So now I want to take that same uh, I want to take that same hexadecimal value and show you a quick conversion to binary because oftentimes uh, you're going to be converting rather than con uh, converting from uh, hexadecimal to decimal. Uh, usually you can get away with just going from hexadecimal straight to binary. So I want to take D six one F and convert that to binary. Okay, so really quick pro tip: this is one uh, one number with a value of what was it? Uh, Fifty-four thousand eight hundred and fifteen. If we uh, take each hexadecimal digit and break it up into its own uh, single digit, you can actually take that and each one is represented by uh, four binary digits. So you can take D and that's represented by four binary digits. Two, uh, six, one, and F. They're all represented by four binary digits. So D uh, can be translated to, uh, what is it? A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, 13, thought so. Okay, so D is 13, so really quick, um, 8 and 4 is 12, so 0, 8, 4, and 12 plus 1. That adds up to, when we have 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, that equals 13, okay? So we got to keep going, we got to keep the string going, so 6 uh, is going to be equal to 4 and 2, so 0, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you know what, I screwed up that D, so 8 would be 1, 1, 0, 1, there we go, that would be D, uh, and then 6 would be 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, and F is going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, okay, so when I do the math on this, this is the binary conversion of this hexadecimal number. So if we start way over here in our ones place, we can go over here in our ones place, we can go all the way over. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where we end up, but we end up with uh, 1, uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, uh, 256, 512, uh, 10, uh, 2048, 4096, so on and so on. So when we do the math on this, uh, I'm going to quickly go ahead and, um, I guess I can pull it up on my phone and show it on the screen. So uh, rather than extrapolating this whole thing out, I'm going to quickly do a binary, binary to decimal converter so that we can quickly see this. So if I put in my binary value, oh, 
Uh, maybe I can lower the exposure or lower my brightness a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that can be seen. Let me try and make it visible. Oh boy, maybe that's not going to work. All right, well, I'm going to just go ahead and do it, and I will tell you what it comes out to. I can actually already tell you it will come out to 54,815, but if I put in 11010110000111111 and hit convert, we end up with the same number. We end up with 54,815, the same number that we had when we converted it earlier. So we end up with the same numbers. And I can show you, I wish I could show you a little bit better, but uh, you see there's a little ad there down in the bottom. I can't, I can't tell if you'll be able to see this. Uh, probably not. Nope. All right, so anyway, in any event. Uh, oh, there we go, that's working. So you see 54,815. Right, I just did the save myself doing the math on this. But there you have it. I guess I went a little over time. That's 25 minutes. I'm gonna stop it there. Um, I'll probably do another video, uh, and hopefully I can do some PowerPoints. So I'll try and have that spliced in uh, throughout the video um, when I do my next one. So uh, that's it for now. Have a good night.